Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're gonna do something new again. I'm sorry, it's early stages of my channel. I'm still figuring out what kind of content I wanna make. And at the moment, I'm making all the content that I that like comes across my head. Anyways, so if you're a gaming fan, particularly if you're a Nintendo fan, you've probably heard of a little thing called Metroid Dread. Now, for a little bit of backstory, Metroid was like my shit when I was a teenager. It was like my favorite franchise. I adored every single one of them, no matter if it was the 2D, the 3D Prime. I even liked, I mean, please don't hate me, but I even liked Metroid Other M. Like I actually liked Metroid Other M when I was a kid. I played it, like 100% of it. I think I played it at like five to six, seven times. It was, I loved it. Regardless though, Metroid Dread. A game that's been rumored since like 2005. Obviously, I didn't know about it in 2005 because I was a little kid, but I knew of its existence since I got into Metroid. And I remember when I was playing Metroid Prime 3 Corruption and like how there was like that log file that would be, um, I think, what was it? It was like Project Dread is nearing completion, and my mind was like exploded. Obviously, little did I know that we would never get another, <laughs> that it would never come until now, until this year. And I just thought, you know what, I have to play all these games again. Now I've decided to do two sort of separate because in my, okay, let me, let me like talk slow at you. Metroid has technically just the one timeline, but it gets a little convoluted, especially because the Prime series are so unconnected to the rest, even though they do technically fit perfectly between Metroid and Metroid 2. They're so like separate that what I've decided is that we have the Metroid series, which is composed of Metroid slash Zero Mission, Metroid 2 slash Simon's Returns, Super Metroid, Other M, Metroid Fusion, and now Dread. And then we also have the Prime series. And that would be Prime 1, Hunters 2, 3, and even Galactic Forces, whatever. Anyway, so I wanna replay them all and I'm not gonna stream them like I streamed Resident Evil games. I'm a big believer that Metroid has to be enjoyed on your own. It just has to be. Like the whole thing is so much about isolation that you just kinda of have to play it on your own. It's not something you wanna play like with other people. The point is I'm playing these on my own but I still wanna talk about them and I can't be telling my boyfriend about it because I'm literally boring the shit out of it. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? My channel, Twitter, Twitch, whatever the fuck, is called Six Things I Hate. And I never use that to the advantage, I feel. So I thought, why not do the six things that I loved about Metro Zero Mission? First thing that I love about this game, which is the presentation. For those that don't know, obviously Zero Mission is a remake of the very first Metroid. And as you can see, Metroid 1, not looking so hot. Metroid Zero Mission looking very hard. <laughs> it was originally on the Game Boy Advance and now you can play it either on the, obviously on the GBA or you can actually buy it on the Wii U, which is how I played it. And let me tell you, this game looks stunning still. I absolutely love the graphics, the art style. It's got that uh, Metroid Fusion engine, which if you've played that, and we're not gonna get to it until much later, but it just looks absolutely stunning and I love it. I love, 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 love everything about it. I also love this game introduced cutscenes because most of the time Metroid games didn't really have cutscenes, um, not until Fusion anyway. This remake adds them and they look stunning. I particularly love them towards the end. I'm not gonna spoil the game just in case you haven't played it and I really want you guys to play this game because it is absolutely amazing. Also, the music, the music in this game. Oh, it's so good. I'm gonna count the music as part of the presentation. It is just absolutely incredible. Uh, it's remixes and remakes of the original, plus a couple of new extra songs, and even some reversions of famous songs from other games like Super Metroid and stuff, which I thought was, was such a great touch. It's kind of right in the thing where if you're a newcomer, obviously you're not gonna recognize everything, but everything will be memorable. And if you are a veteran coming into this remake, you're gonna recognize the songs and the new take on them. The only downside would be obviously the limitations of the Game Boy Advance means that some of the arrangements don't sound as good as they should be, but I played this straight from my Wii U gamepad. It sounded great. In fact, there's like some weird surround shit happening at some points that really freaked me out because I actually thought it was like, you know, you know. Anyways, number two, the exploration. Particularly the way the game makes you feel like you are discovering everything on your own, but it's also just funneling you in the right direction so that you never miss anything that's important or that you will need later. The best example of this is if we just watch the very, very, very first thing that you do in the game, which is you come in, you, you know, you've never played a metric game before. You've played 2D games maybe, so you kind of know that you usually go to the right. So you go to the right and you can go through a few doors, see a little bit of the map, and then boom, roadblock. You can't go anywhere. You keep going, you try and go up, you can't, you try and go down, you can't. So what do you do? You go back. 
and then you go you realize oh actually i can go left like this is in for all intents and purposes it is an open world game it's an open map you can go anywhere anytime do whatever you want as long as you have the right power-ups so you keep going left and you find the morph ball and guess what now you can turn yourself into a cute little marble and now you can actually progress and the game just does this over and over and over again and it becomes more and more and more complex and more and more satisfying also something that it does much better than what the original did which had no map and no waypoints of any kind is there are these chozo statues and sometimes they'll give you a waypoint and you'd be like oh it's kind of ruining the point of the exploration because it's telling me exactly where to go until you realize that all it does is show you a point on the map, sometimes not even on the map, so somewhere off the map, and that's it. And now you have to figure out how to get there. And there's usually one, two, three, four, five, however many roadblocks, and you have to go and get them. Kind of like Resident Evil, obviously this came, the original Metroid was before Resident Evil. So if you played a survival horror game like that, but you're gonna recognize that like gameplay loop of having a big area that you have to slowly make your way through by getting items or power-ups in this case, and then you'll also be able to kind of like come back to older areas and figure out more stuff. And this game rewards exploration so much. Every room has a secret cranny corner path that will give you loads of different items and including um, optional, completely optional power-ups, which I think is super, super, super cool. Like there are certain things in this game that you don't, and I'm not talking just like missiles, like there are full on superpowers that you can get that are completely optional that you don't need, but will make your life a lot easier and also will just make you feel a lot cooler. So the exploration alone is obviously, it's, I mean, it's the best part of Metroid. Just to quickly add to this point as well, and don't worry, the other ones won't be as long, the sense of isolation that you get because of the exploration is unparalleled. It is so amazing and oddly refreshing to like, just be in this world completely by yourself feeling by yourself and feeling like you're leveling up and powering up. It is really, really, really such an unparalleled experience that I can't really compare to other game franchises. I know Metroidvania is like a whole thing, but I don't think any game does it quite like Metroid does. And I think specifically Zero Mission is an exceptional, exceptional um, version of that. Because even though you feel isolated, it's not you're still feeling empowered, which will be something that we'll get into later because Super Metroid is almost the antithesis of that because you're feeling like very alone and also very sad. Whereas here you're like, you're alone, and but you're surviving, you're fighting, you're making your way through and you're getting more stronger. And it's just like, it makes you as a player feel absolutely incredible. And number three, the controls. The controls, you might say, it's a GBA game. Literally, what are you gonna do? Press A and B? Yes, exactly. And it feels so good. Samus feels tight and very responsive. If you compare it to the original, she was super floaty and super difficult to control, especially in those areas where they had like smaller platforms that you have to like be very specific with and land on. This game is just, it, it's a great platformer. Like I don't think the platforming is the focus of Metroid, even though there is a lot of it, but this game has such tight controls. It makes it feel really, really amazing. The shooting feels very responsive and just the very simple way of being able to just hold down R and shoot to change between normal beam and the missiles is so amazing and such an upgrade that you will only really appreciate if you've already played the older games. But if you're a newcomer, I still recommend this is the best place to start for Metroid. To number four, the creature design. Now, I know a lot of the creatures are kind of like based off of their designs from Super Metroid, so we'll probably talk a little bit more about that there, but they look amazing here. Again, the art style and the presentation looks super, super good, and I really, really loved it, and the bosses look great. Ridley, ugh, who doesn't love Ridley? He's just a weird, giant, super intelligent purple dragon, and he's just fucking cool, but also the, I like Mother Brain. It's very faithful to the original, but also just feels very modern and... and the space fire to dope and the metroids man the metroids are scary which is actually like the metroids are scary like this game is scary as soon as the metroids show up they are very difficult to kill they kill you very very quickly and they just have this like threatening aura i don't want to get too much into it because their introduction i think is really really cool and i want you guys to experience that by yourselves but it is so dope the metroids are fucking amazing love them <sighs> and number five the upgrades I know I was talking a, lot, a bunch about the upgrades of, during the exploration. They are so cool. They range from very simple things like being able to turn into the ball. You have a short beam at first and you can upgrade it to be like a longer beam so you can shoot further away. Missiles, super missiles, etc. But if you play in a metric game, all the big ones are in this game, which is really great. And if you haven't, then I don't want to spoil it for you, but let me just say super speed, high jumping, 
Um, some different suits. Yes, there are different suits. Like, as they look cool. I feel like very nerdy, and I don't. Yeah, I feel like if you know Metroid, you know. But if you don't know Metroid, man, like the the upgrades are dope. So I don't want to spoil them for you because I really do want absolutely everybody to play this game. Metroid is always in this problem where it gets like the best reviews and everyone loves it and no one buys it <laughs> literally no matter what game in the franchise like i think metro prime is the only one that broke that curse but they just don't sell and i just really want people to buy this game and support the franchise like we haven't had a fucking 2d metro game in 19 years a new one i mean we had a remake like three years ago but still and we haven't had a mainline game since 2010 11 years and people didn't even like that game I like it, but not other people. So buy the game. At number six, the entire final, final section. Now, this is gonna be spoilers because the entire final section is just one of some of my favorite moments in all of Metroid. So I'm gonna put a timestamp right here and you can click on it uh, to, you know, skip the spoilers. Or you don't care about spoilers, in which case, just keep listening. The original Metroid, you kill Mother Brain, a self-destruct sequence starts, you have to get out and run away. And then that's it, mission accomplished. Boohoo, like, amazing, you did it. Like, good job, girl. In Zero Mission, you're still doing the same shit, you kill Mother Brain, which is a very tough fight, by the way, and you get out, and then what happens? The space pirates shoot you down, and you crash land back into this planet Zebes, and you have to infiltrate their mothership to try and find a way out because your ship is crashed, and not only is your ship completely unusable, your suit is gone. So you are left in the Zero Suit, which is obviously the title of the game, so I guess it's not that big of a surprise, and also, you know, it is a little fan service you do get to see her little boobies and her little ass, but she looks great, and we love it, and we love her, and we love Big 2D anime girls, anyway. This is a stealth section, and again, it becomes very scary, and I know it sounds crazy that I'm talking about a game being scary when it's literally a 2D, colorful, Game Boy Advance game, but it really is intimidating and scary, the way these space pirates can annihilate you in, like, a blink of an eye and you have to just sort of like crawl in tunnels go above and down and find your way around like all these different traps and stuff to try and find a way out and all you have is this paralyzing gun that will paralyze a first of all it has to recharge so you can't shoot it multiple times and it will only paralyze the space bars for a few seconds so it really is scary until you find the chosen ruins and you get this flashback be like shit I, I know this area because i was here when i was a little girl um, just for canon context, obviously, if you don't know, like, her parents were murdered by Ridley in front of her, so she was raised by this alien species called the Chozo, and that I like, trained her up and all that kind of stuff. So she gets all these flashbacks, and she finds a new suit, and boy, is this new suit satisfying. You get all of your power ups back, and more, because throughout the game, you've been picking up these things called unknown items that are incompatible with your suit, and that's the plasma bean, the gravity suit, and like the space jump and holy shit you then you've just spent about an hour being terrified from these space pirates and now you are ripping them to shreds you're literally just like going across just completely bombarding everything and everybody and you just you've never i've never felt a game make me feel more powerful than this game and i know that sounds like a complete overstatement because again gba game very old game whatever you just it is pure power that you feel if you want to have a power trip play this game honestly i just can't recommend this game enough i love it so so fucking much the final boss fight a little weak i will say but the final like escape sequence amazing hi welcome back those who didn't want to see the spoilers and if you've been watching on along thanks for sticking around and those were the six things that i absolutely love about metro zero mission this game i can't stop recommending it enough for everybody i know the problem is and this is a problem with Nintendo. Nintendo, I love you babes, but you are a company that actively hates your fans. And I don't understand how you have all these fucking games that everybody wants to buy and give you money for and you don't let us. So I know it's a difficult game to come by because you literally only, like you literally have to either buy the GBA, buy a secondhand version of the very first 3DS that somehow happened to be part of the very limited ambassador program because the normal 3DS you can't get or you can buy it on the Wii U. Luckily, I was one of the losers that bought a Wii U way back then, but you know what I mean? Like, it is, it's kind of a shame. So I'm not gonna say it, but there are alternate ways, very, very easy ways to play this game, but I'm not gonna recommend 
But also I don't feel bad talking about it because Nintendo won't let you fucking play the game on modern consoles. Bitch. But the point is, play this game. Especially if you want to pick up Metroid Dread, I recommend you play this game. It's a short, like I said, I've beaten in four hours. I've played it before. I think when, if you've never played it before, you could probably beat it in like six hours. It's a very short game and it's absolutely incredible. So what's my plan with this series, I guess? I'm going to play all of them again. Not the Prime games. That will be their own series whenever Prime 4 comes out, if at all. I'm focusing on the mainline Metroid titles and stories. Because uh, right now we're light on story, but the story does get more convoluted the more games we go. So, you know, there's that. The next game I'm going to be playing is Metroid Simon's Returns, which I bought physically on 3DS and I don't own a 3DS. So I have to figure out how the fuck I'm going to play it. <laughs> so it might be a while before I post that video because I literally have to either buy a 3DS or borrow a friend. But yeah, I'll be playing that for the very first time, which I'm very excited about. And yeah. Also, I kind of mentioned this briefly at the beginning. I kind of want to say a big, big thank you to everyone that's subscribed to my channel and that's kind of watching these videos and stuff because I know that I'm a little bit all over the shop. <laughs> like I started with the Blu-rays and I did comic books and stuff and I don't know, I don't feel like I'm being consistent with the content. So I know that's kind of a detriment to myself and my own channel, but also I will make this as a hobby and I just want to talk about the shit that I want to talk about. Like I'm very passionate about all this really nerdy stuff that I feel really bad, you know, yelling at to my friends and boyfriend and all that kind of stuff. So I need this kind of outlet, which is kind of what YouTube has become. And so I'm not really, you know, so I just, the point is, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. Um, I guess thank you for bearing with. <laughs> I know I'm all over the place, I know I'm making videos I probably shouldn't be making and I should just stick to the one thing, uh, but that's just not who I am, so take it or leave it, I guess. Uh, which is crazy as well, it's like I've done like one vinyl video and that's the one that I'm still getting hundreds of views a day, which is mental. I do love vinyls, but you know what I mean, I feel like, anyways. With that said, podcast is still going, so you know, make sure you check that out. We're now on Google Podcasts and Spotify, and I think by the time you might watch this video, we might be on Apple Podcast. I'm not sure, but it's gonna happen at some point within the next, like, days or so. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, hit subscribe, give me a like, comment, have you played Metroid Zero Mission? Are you planning a Metroid Zero Mission? If, you, if you're not, why the fuck are you not planning on playing Metroid Zero Mission? It is good. For non-gamers as well, Gemma, looking at you. Gemma, the non-gamer. This is a good place to start because it's not too complicated and it's easy to control and it kind of teaches you game mechanics that you can transfer to other games. It's a perfect place to start. Anyways, thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Bye.